What's up everybody, this is Danny, and this week I'm in Malaysia for something very special with Intel, but while I'm here, I wanna test out the Galaxy S23 Ultra versus the new Galaxy Z Fold 5, because I think a lot of people want to move to the foldable, but they're afraid of the possible step down in camera quality if they move from an Ultra. So is it really that big of a step down though? I definitely want to test that. So just follow me on my journey and let's talk about some of the differences between these two phones. So first, let's talk about the obvious difference, the form factor. The Galaxy S23 Ultra is traditional, it's what we know. I'm doing a big update on this, by the way, so I wanna make sure that the cameras are up to date. And it just feels good in the hand and you get probably the best cameras in the world right now. But the foldable is like a two-in-one. You get this skinnier display on the outside, but then when you open it up, you get this big display. I mean, it's like carrying a tablet and a phone at the same time, and it's pretty compact. I think a lot of people are afraid that this might be too thick, but if you look at these two, yeah, it is thicker for sure, but it's definitely pocketable. And before we go any further, yes, I know I'm wearing an Apple Watch. Leave me alone. Now they do both have S Pens, but they're not quite created equal. You can get this S Pen case for the Z Fold 5. It's got a pretty cool design where you can pop out a thin S Pen, but this is not Bluetooth connected and you don't have to charge this. So you do get basic functions out of this, but you don't quite get all of the functions that you would get from the built-in S Pen. With this, this is built into the body, which is kind of the dream for the Z Fold lineup. And I think that's coming soon, but you can control your camera with this as a remote shutter and the drawing experience is better on this. So if you are a big fan of the S Pen, the S23 Ultra is still the way to go. Since Samsung didn't introduce new headphones at Galaxy Unpacked, I want to talk about the channel sponsor Anchor Soundcore. They just released the Liberty 4 NC and for how affordable they are, they pack a major punch with tons of high-end features. I don't know how they're doing it. First, I love the design. The case is compact and has a standout look, and if you hit that button, there is lighting on the inside, which makes it really easy to see in dark conditions, which I really appreciate. I also like the choices of colors that are available. You might have caught my unboxing on Instagram showing the fun colors so you can match your style, but in the end, it's all about the sound, and these do not disappoint. 11 millimeter drivers with a clean sound, well-balanced profile, really enjoying my music on this. The app has preset equalizers to make it easy for you to dial in that sound that you want, but I really appreciated the custom EQ to dial in my perfect sound. For both of these phones, you get Google Fast Pair and multi-point connection, which even higher end earbuds don't have. Up to 50 hours battery life with the case and adaptive active noise canceling 2.0, which I was able to test on multiple flights this month and it worked well. And most importantly, they are comfortable I was able to wear them for hours without noticing. So I will leave a link down below for an incredible deal. Check the current pricing because you'll be blown away how good these are. And they're perfect for the Galaxy Z Fold 5 or the S23 Ultra. When it comes to everyday use, they both perform fantastic because they're powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy. So you're getting very similar performance, but you will see better battery life on the Galaxy S23 Ultra because it does have a bigger battery, but do not sleep on the Z Fold 5 because even with its smaller battery, it gets great battery life. I think a lot of people are afraid of that, but in my experience so far, I'm going a full day, ending at like 30% with lots of screen on time. So if you're afraid of the battery life on the Z Fold 5, don't be. As you might have guessed, this comparison is gonna lean heavily on the camera side of things because I think that's what is important to a lot of people, but it's all about the form factor too that helps a lot. You can prop this up to get steady video, which I think is really, really key, and you can take high resolution selfies, but I will put all that to the test. So for the camera, it is great, but when it comes to everyday function, this is great too because you can prop it up and watch YouTube videos. I find myself doing this a lot, so this is a great travel companion. And because I don't use the Fold as my daily driver, I forget all the time how amazing split-screen multitasking is on this. And yes, you can feel the crease and you can see that on every foldable phone, but trust me, you will get used to it and you won't really see it anymore. The camera in your pocket is the most important camera in my opinion, so how much of a difference is there? I think the thing that you need to know is that if you want the best of what Samsung is doing on the camera side of things, the S23 Ultra is the best of the best. 200 megapixel main sensor, a ultra wide, a 3X, and also a 10X optical zoom lens, which is incredible to have in your pocket. But the Z Fold 5 is more in line with what you will see with a non-ultra Galaxy S model with 50 megapixel main sensor, 3X zoom, and an ultra wide, but specs don't tell the whole story. Just how much of a difference will you actually see Let's start with the front-facing camera. All right, I'm walking around the streets of Penang out here. It's really cool. The Georgetown area is really colorful, is beautiful. I wish I had a little bit more time 
to explore this area, but wow, it's really, really hot out here as you can see. So let me know which video looks better. 4K30 on the front on both of these. This comparison actually surprised me and I think it will surprise a lot of you too. Let's start with the daytime photos. There are times where I did see some big differences in colors like this one, but besides some of the saturation differences, the daytime photos look very similar. They do go back and forth on which one outputs the brighter and more vibrant image, but some of them look so similar, I don't think the average consumer will notice a big difference. But if you're going to notice anything, it's going to be the sharpness. The Galaxy S23 Ultra produces a slightly softer look and has a bigger sensor, so you'll get more natural bokeh or background blur. Look at this picture of my truffle ramen I had for lunch, and this is a good example. Look at the background on the S23 Ultra. This has natural blur, where the smaller sensor of the Z Fold 5 keeps almost all of the frames sharp. And then when you punch in, you can see that the food itself is very sharp on the Z Fold 5, where the roll-off starts to happen before the egg on the S23 Ultra, and the seaweed is already blurred, so it will be personal preference but I also wouldn't blame the average consumer looking at pictures like this side by side and choosing the Z Fold 5 because of the sharper all-around image but if you really want to get up close though remember there's no macro mode on the Z Fold 5 so keep that in mind it does come in handy sometimes look at this shot from the rooftop from our first dinner at the Intel Tech Tour look at the sky and the mountains back here the best way to describe it it's almost like a clarity filter you can see it and that's mostly due to the higher contrast on the Z Fold 5's processing you can see it here on board at work shirt it's represented much darker with that pop of vibrancy in the background and I'm going to be honest I was genuinely surprised by this comparison I expected a much bigger difference with the S23 Ultra but let me show you the high resolution modes because this is where it gets interesting I know it seems like simple math of course 200 megapixels is better than 50 megapixels right so why are you showing me this well what I did is I took the 50 megapixel shots on both of these just to see the S23 Ultra gives you a choice of 50 megapixel and 200 megapixel photos and even on the 50 megapixels pictures the Ultra looks sharper and when you punch in heavily you can't see that extra sharpening which you may like or may not like. The more updated processing handles the highlights better on the Z Fold 5 so when you inspect the image more, look at the clipping here on the S23 Ultra where it handled very well on the Z Fold 5. This area of Georgetown was amazing to test out high resolution photography so let me know which one that you think looks better but the 200 megapixel mode on the S23 Ultra is incredible. When you punch into the image you can really see the power of the S23 Ultra. The clarity and information you just get is on another level. So if you take a lot of landscape photography and nature shots the S23 Ultra is the one to use. You have all this flexibility to crop in as much as you need to but not everyone actually needs this so if you don't need it the 50 megapixel will be just fine on the Z Fold 5. The next big thing is the zoom and having 3x is fine for most people but the 10x zoom is so good on the S23 Ultra when you have it you'll use it often. Here's the same rooftop scenario that you saw earlier from the main lens and then here is the 3x they look very similar but then here is the 10x and it does pick up a lot more smogginess though which is a little weird on the S23 Ultra but the 30x really shows how powerful this camera system is. It's almost unreal to see how much information is still retained and then here's the 100x for fun. It's not really usable but I wanted to include it anyway. Here's a shot from my hotel room window for another full range test and 3x again looks very similar so nothing stand out about this one but the 10x digital on the Z Fold 5 really cranks up that sharpness and saturation so I can see people liking this more but the 30x again shows the real difference between the two this is the maximum zoom on the z fold 5 and again here's the 100x so if you're a fan of zoom this is what you're going to be missing out on but if you're just using the 3x like a lot of people do to get a different perspective here's a few that i took that day in georgetown both did a great job but i'm super surprised just how good the z fold 5 camera kept up with the s23 ultra the difference just isn't as big as i thought with just everyday photos so let's go ahead and talk about the front facing camera. The S23 Ultra in this portrait mode picture did pick up more detail, but they both look really good. I did notice that the Z Fold 5 does have a wider front facing camera. It's not huge, but I definitely noticed it. First, I thought it was just me, but the more pictures that I saw, you can see it on the portrait mode shots as well. But overall, I do like the S23 Ultra shots a little bit more. Sometimes the Z Fold 5 does produce a sharper image, but I do prefer the colors from the S23 Ultra here. They are both on the natural setting. The S23 Ultra does have a little bit of natural background separation where the Z Fold 5, everything is just sharp as you've seen on the other photos. I have to say I was disappointed with the S23 Ultra's front facing camera in low light though. We took a series of pictures and all of them pretty much came out blurry compared to the Z Fold 5. The Z Fold 5 here did fail though. I'm not sure what happened here, but if there's no movement, 
the S23 Ultra does a better job with night mode selfies as you can see and you can always use the main cameras so it's easy to frame yourself. This is an ultra wide night mode shot on the Z Fold 5 and then what is crazy is I saw the same shutter speed problems when it comes to the main camera too. I was just getting a couple of pictures of Siobhan and you can just see how good the Z Fold 5 did overall. While neither of them completely eliminated the movement, the Z Fold 5 did really well. But again, if you're really still, the S23 Ultra does show off that bigger sensor with a more detailed image and better natural colors. Even when it came down to even lower light conditions, I was surprised that the Z Fold 5 kept up as well as it did. You can see that the S23 Ultra does pick up some extra light. It really accentuates that light source well with more depth of field, so it does look really good. But this is just a single snap of the hotel pool outside, and these look so similar it's crazy and then when you activate night mode this is just way too close it's really hard to believe the main difference is the timing on the night mode the shot was one second on the ultra and two seconds on the z fold 5 but that extra second did bring out a little more highlight detail but the noise reduction is slightly better on the s23 ultra but you really have to punch in to see that the ultra wide did show some more detail here on the s23 ultra as you can see on the building texture here on the right side but when you activate night mode again it's too close for comfort don't get me wrong you will see some more detail sometimes on the s23 ultra but was this surprising to you and on top of that the video reflects the same difference this is 4k 30 frames per second and this is a perfect scenario to test them side by side they both have good stabilization while handheld so that's great the S23 Ultra does retain more shadow detail where the Z Fold 5's heavy contrast and highlight control mute some of the textures the sunlight is providing. So let me know what you think. They both shoot 8K video, super detailed on both, so you'll get the highest resolution available in your pocket on both of these phones. Here is the video cropped across the street so you can just see how much detail is in this video. So the 8K video feature is amazing if you have the extra storage. I was also surprised at night the video is brighter and looks sharper on the Z Fold 5. I had to check three or four times just to make sure that I didn't mix them up. This is a shocker to me, so while there are things to love about the S23 Ultra and its flagship features, you should not be afraid to get this foldable device if your primary focus is the camera because Samsung really tuned this so well. But in saying that, if I had to pick one just primarily for the camera alone, I think I would still pick the S23 Ultra, but the Z Fold 5's cameras are absolutely legit and I think it can be the primary camera in your pocket. So does this video change your mind about getting a Z Fold 5 now? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and if you want to pick either one of these phones up, I will leave them linked down below so you can get the best pricing on both. Subscribe for more videos just like this one and I will see you in the next one.